everyone, I'm back. Yes, I took a little break. I actually went on a family trip uh, to Singapore and Malaysia. My cousin had a wedding. And in that time, I actually lost a subscriber. So, you must have missed me. You really missed me. <laughs> no, I apologize for not filming videos in advance and uploading them. I actually have filmed a ton of content, but editing is something... I still struggle with, but I will be making it up to you. I will be uploading two videos tonight, hopefully, because Beyonce is releasing and I want to do an ASMR around that. But in this video here, I wanted to show you what I bought on my trip abroad because I feel like when I go abroad, I spend money like it's toy money. You know, as soon as it's a different currency, nothing means anything to me. <laughs> Now, some of the items were actually gifts and I've given them away, so I can't show them to you, but what I decided to splurge on for myself is what I can walk through with you here today. So I'm first going to start with this hat here, which I bought in Adidas at Viva City in Singapore. It's actually part of Beyonce's Ivy Park range, um, Ivy Topia. And the Adidas in my city, or near my city here in Australia, doesn't actually stock Ivy Park usually. It usually goes to only Sydney and Melbourne. And so I thought it was a cool chance to actually check out Ivy Park in person before I purchase because um, the sizing of Ivy Park can be very wild and crazy, so it's always good to try. I had actually given up on buying hats from Ivy Park because most hats in the world don't fit me, I've got quite a big head, um, <clears throat> figuratively and physically. <laughs> but I went into the store and they had two sizes for their bucket hats. So I tried on the larger size and lo and behold it fits. All Ivy Park hats are actually reversible. So you have the silver side here, which is reflective. And then you have this sort of on the green side here. Oh, I just need to get rid of that tag. And then the front and back is the Adidas or Adidas logo. And then Ivy Park. And that's the same for both sides. And that sort of embossed metal print. So let's try it on. I have to take off my headphones. Now the store didn't have a lot of options, in fact, it really had only kids options and I think that was really good to help me control how much I was spending because it was my last day so I was just getting rid of all my currency so, but this was a good purchase and it's got this detachable chain that you can use to sort of keep around your neck if you're not feeling like you're wanting to wear it all the time. And then you wear the silver side, the chain hooks on the inside. And then when you reverse it, the chain hooks are on the outside, just here. But yeah, it fits on a nice and it's a nice way to be part of the Ivy Topia without sort of doubling up on things I have too much of. But yeah, I think this is a really useful piece and I will be wearing it a lot, so that's why I can justify that. Moving on. So the main things that I splurged on for this trip was actually trying to find a signature scent because Scent shopping in Australia is a little difficult and it's a little trickier and if I can get duty free, which means no tax because I'm not a citizen of the country I was shopping in, um, then I'm all for it. So my first stop was actually a little labo store. There are no Lilabos in my city, but the Labo is sold in like uh, retailers like Mecca 
But I don't really want to get my lilabers from there because, you know, I've seen stories of people having their lilaber made in the store and it's just a better experience to get someone that knows more about the fragrance specifically and not just someone who's meant to know about all these general departments. Now, in case you don't know, Lilabo is kind of like a bougie brand. Uh, I've had a former romantic interest put me on them, and I got my first Lilabo bottle, 50 mils, in the Tonka 25, I think it is. So I got that a couple of years ago in Taiwan. And I, now the Taipei store does not make their scents fresh in the store, unfortunately, but it was still a good experience. But I wanted to go to Singapore's Lilabo stores to get that freshly made scent and I tried a bunch here in Australia in the retailers and I knew which scent I wanted and I was just gonna go and make sure but when I went lo and behold the store was out of the ingredients to make it so instead I found something else I feel like I could get a use out of firstly there was this sort of uh, journal magazine marketing material that was free in the store and I picked up maybe I can do a relaxing reading of it or do a dedicated video to the library maybe once I'm more familiar with what I bought and can give you some more useful thoughts but what I ended up buying was a discovery set as well as a sample of the scent I originally went to go in and get so Firstly, the Discovery Set, which comes in a small box. It is five 1.5 milliliter samples of different top scents from the Labo. So you get another 13, uh, Bergamot 22, Rose 31, Centaur 33, and Te Noir 29, uh, labelled in Singapore on 19th of July. And I just said, smell here later. Because he said I could put anything there, but then I realised it said 4XYZ, so that's a bit regrettable. I would say Lulabo isn't really a brand for everyone. It's a bit, um, yeah, just bougie and a bit ditzy in a way almost. But I feel like it's a self-aware brand, but it's very, like, known to appeal to a certain crowd then yeah maybe I am part of that <laughs> pretentious art ho crowd which I don't want to label anyone who enjoys these scents as I enjoy these scents but I think that's the sort of image it sometimes conjures when I tell people that I like Lulabo uh, but I can't deny it. it's still nice it's still a nice experience <laughs> being in the store and being talked to about all these unique scents too. I'm a sucker. <laughs> so the discovery set opens up like this. And there you have your little samples. How cute. Now I believe these samples are sprayable. So why don't we spray some and can see that right so the samples you get um that you pay for are sprayable but the samples they give you in the store sometimes when you've bought x amount is not sprayable i've got one for my when i bought my first bottle let's see if i still have it so here is an example of the sort of free samples they can give you just like a bottle that of the liquid and you just sort of douse it onto your um, points that you want to actually send up. But anyway, let's go ahead and spray. Now the man in the store said you get around 15 sprays out of each, which I was like 15 sprays out of 1.5 mils, so that's pretty good. So the first sample is another 13. And I've got my phone here so I can read you briefly what the brand actually says about these scents so uh, 
I do see myself doing like a dedicated video to the Labo, so I'll be I'll be keeping this quick and simple. But I feel like I haven't seen you guys for so long. I should give you a little more content. So I hope this is relaxing to one of you out there. Are you ready? So the brand says, in 2010, La Lava was commissioned by and other magazine to work on an exclusive scent. This project was born thanks to Sarah of Colette, who initiated the creative collaboration between the Lava and Jefferson Hack, editor-in-chief of another magazine. The result of this collaboration is Another 13, a hypnotizing and unique scent. It's composed of Ambrox, a synthetic animal musk, making Another 13 an addictive, dirty potion blended with 12 other ingredients such as jasmine, moss and ambrette seeds, absolute, which gives it a spike and shine. As the entire planet knows, Colette closed their doors December 2017, but luckily we were able to welcome another 13 to our classic collection and our labs worldwide. Okay, so from that I'm guessing the notes will be a synthetic animal musk, whatever that means. Um, jasmine, moss, amber seeds. So, I'm going to spray on my skin because I do believe skin affects scent. and I apologize if I mispronounce anything. So the Labo says, This dazzling bergamot combines freshness, sweetness, and sensuality with acrobatic talent. All these qualities were encompassed in the perfume's initial codename, Fire Cologne. It's the delicate floral character of petite green, the bitterness of grapefruit, as well as the flamboyant sweetness of amber and musk with the viral or viral touch of vetiver which gives bergamot 22 its unique personality okay that took a little while to spray it's very citrusy and it's very wet <laughs> smelling which i don't mind i'll check in at the end to see how they've all dried down to get their truer base notes but for now that is the initial smell there is a green element coming in here. It's not too vegetal, but it is on that. It's on that way. 
I don't get um, too soapy vibes out of this, but there is an element of soapiness to it as well as an undercurrent. That that again sort of has a grounding element. I feel like that's pretty typical of what I've tried with Lavabo is that there'll be all these smells and then there'll be something that sort of grounds everything together. Um, so the third sample is, the, I would say, their signature scent, which is Suntal 33. Do you remember the old Marlboro ads? A man and his horse in front of the fire of a great plain under tall blue evening skies. Defining image of the spirit of the American West with all it implied about masculinity and personal freedom. This man, firelight in his face, leaning on the worn leather saddle, alone with the desert wind, an icon so powerful that every man wanted to be him and every woman wanted to have him. From this memory is born Centaur 33. The ambition to create an olfactive form inspired by the great American myth still a source of fantasy for the rest of the world. A perfume that touches the sensual universality of this icon that would intoxicate a man as much as a woman that introduces our use of cardamom, iris, violet, ambrox, which crackle in the formula and bring to this smoking wood alloy. Australian sandalwood, cedarwood, some spicy, leathery, musky notes, and gives this perfume its unisex signature and addictive comfort. Here is, in a few words, what Santal 33 is, an open fire, the soft drift of smoke, where sensuality rises after the light has gone. You see what I mean now when I say there's an air of art ho hipster pretentiousness <laughs> um but i love it you know <laughs> someone sat down and wrote that and i appreciate it because oftentimes brands will spend minimal amount of time on that but i like sort of putting an effort to building up a mythos about something even though i vehemently am against that image not against sorry i react negatively to that idea suiting me, but um, you're not here to talk about that, let's just bring it on, I'll try the inner wrist here, okay, ready, on, I'm just like looking for the hole, okay, so one, two, three, Do you see that? It's sort of failing me. I've been told these samples can be a bit shit, the sprays, so I'll just have to try that again. Okay, it was very not, not vaporizing at all. It was coming out in big droplets. And it's still sort of leaking in the bottle. Which I wish I knew before I'd bought the sample set. That is one thing I do have to say, the components, given the price for the Labo, are very awful. Um, and I am someone that does love uh, packaging, <laughs> but even that, even if I didn't, I think I would not like Labo's stuff because it has broken easily on me. It's very basic and the price you pay just should warrant a functioning um, spritzer at least, and sort of a rod that reaches to the bottom of the bottle, helps you get every last drop of product. Okay, yeah, it's coming back to me now, I've definitely smelt this before in more than one person, in the circles I travel. It is very earthy to me, I guess, <laughs> um, maybe it's wood that I'm smelling and I'm just calling it earth because I've, I've been told it's a very woody scent but to me it just reminds me of earth of being in the forest of or bush and walking around it does not evoke it does not evoke a man smoking cigarettes in an evening sky to me it evokes um, yeah it evokes creative people 
spending time with each other in dark rooms it evokes being young and it evokes city jungles and walking walking pavements and exploring a city by itself and visiting a city's botanic garden and that sort of energy and vibe which I know is so useless if you're trying to gauge what it smells like but yeah it's just very earthy and there's a hint of smokiness to it to me um but yeah it lacks in floral and it lacks in spice and it lacks in musk and it lacks in citrus so I can tell you what it's not um but what it is is to me woodland and ancient but young and um being in a botanic garden but knowing there is a metropolitan area very near you so yeah it's not wanderlust but it is um it's, it's it's appreciating what's in front of you and not caring if you are pretentious because who's to say what pretentious is i guess wow what a great way of describing a sand i'm sure that's useful for so many of you <laughs> okay we're rounding it out soon enough let's go on to the fourth sample which is row study one which is the one i'm most excited for i would say if this house the house of le labo has another signature Rose 31 might be fighting for that second spot between Tenoa and another yeah um but it's supposed to be this sort of unisex different take on Rose the perfume's aim is clear to transform the famous Grasse Rose a symbol of voluptuousness and unqualified femininity into assertively virile or virile or viral viral fragrance that can be worn by men and women. The result is a model of its kind, alternating feminine and masculine with the disturbing ambiguity of the centerfolia rose, quickly picked up by a chorus of warm, spicy and woodsy notes such as cumin, albanum, albanum, cedar and a touch of amber. In the background, the declared centrality of kayak wood and Sisters highlighted by a distinctly physical animal note gives this perfume a disconcerting sense of mystery. I'm intrigued and also a little tired after reading that, so let's just spray it. And I'll spray it aiming for around here so I don't mix it up with Becca Mott. Three. That was a good spray. Okay. Mmm, I really love this. To me, it reads more as a winter weekday kind of scent. Maybe you're just leaving the office and you're going for drinks immediately afterwards. You don't have time to shower and get ready, so you just want to spritz a little something to freshen you up but not make you appear perky. It's mature. It doesn't give me modern, but it gives me someone who knows themselves and not that those two terms are on the same spectrum of describing anything it has a certain spiciness to it i admit um i'm not really smelling rose but i'm unfamiliar with rose what, smell, what rose smells like what i guess i'm saying is i'm not getting floral from this but i really do like it I also don't think it's me, like, I don't think it's part of the story I present of myself. I think I'm a little more boyish and impish and unsure of myself, whereas this scent is for someone I imagine who would be sure of himself. Let's move on to the last sample now, which is... Can anyone guess? Te Noa. Te Inua 29 is an ode to the noble leaf and the craft that surrounds it. Te Inua 29 combines depth and freshness 
softness and strength through permanent oscillation between the light of bergamot, fig and bay leaves and the depth of cedarwood, vetiver and musk. A special extraction of black tea leaves wrapped with the composition of bringing to the formula a dry, leafy, hay, tobacco feeling in the dry root and the dry down to transform this creation into a sensuous and addictive essence. Hmm. I used to work in a tea shop, so this should be familiar. <laughs> I'm going to spray it next to where we sprayed scent out, so I've sort of got my lighter scent, or what I thought would be the lighter scent and the darker scent. You know, one, two, three. Oh, bad spray. One, two, three. Okay, you just got to be fast if you get a bad spray. Um, there is something quite odd about it. Um, an almost, I don't want to say aggressive, but something dark and mysterious and something that you don't know what its intentions are kind of I again don't think this scent would suit the stories I present about myself but it's nice it's earthy but not the same way Santal was where Santal was a walk in the bush Tainawa is giving when you're in the cabin and the bush is raining you know and it could offer shelter but it could also harbour more sinister things and it doesn't smell like um, perfumes that imitate the effect of rain but has a sort of nature aspect to it uh, where you sort of look at nature and it's not welcoming but it's still quite awe-inspiring and beautiful whereas Santal I look at nature and it's pretty uh, ten hours I look at nature and I realize how small I am kind of energy. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> uh, but moving on to the last sample, which is the separate sample I got, the Te, te Matcha 26, um, which is a skin scent. And it does not come in any sets, so I had to buy a separate. I'm really hoping this sample bottle is not going to be Happy. The Labo says, in the same way, matcha tea is much more than just a drink in Japanese culture. Te Matcha 26 is much more than a scent to us. It is a moment of introspection, a moment of self that offers a quiet inner celebration of grace and soulful beauty. A simple whiff takes us away from the hum of the outside and brings us back in. Matcha tea accord is infused with a creamy fig note grounded by soft vetiver and textural cedar woods and uplifted by enticing bitter orange. Introverted and deep by nature, Te Matcha or The Matcha 26 is a skin scent, something meant for and only those individuals lucky enough to be very close to you, the wearer. It carries a noble stillness. To us, it is a scented reminder of home, of welcome solitude, all things familiar and treasured. There we go. And there is a sharpness when you first smell it, and it's almost, yeah, citrusy with that bitter orange. But I think my body's chemical makeup or whatever subdues it. Or maybe that's just the dry down and it becomes this sort of creamy and milky scent. And that's a word I hated people using to describe scents because I was like, when you say milky, I think like lactation, like physical milk. But once you smell this, you realize it just means it's more connected and not in your face. And just like, at least to me, it's like, okay, you say you have fig which might come off a bit more sweet or 
was sharper but when I say it's a creamy fig or a milky fig it becomes a little more maybe mellow a little more agreeable a little more inviting and a little more like that so yeah it's smelling a little different for some reason <laughs> now that I'm smelling it on my hand than it did that day but I know it just ages really well on me it becomes really inviting and I really like it so yeah let me quickly assess the dry downs of all the others so the first one we sprayed on my hand on the finger was another 13 or another 31 no another 13 still very classic and it's a lot muskier than what I remember it's very I'm getting kind of like a soapy vibe it's nice um, it's a nice little office scent for me, like a springtime office scent. I don't see it being a signature scent for me though. Bergamot. Oh. Okay, the citrus is gone and it's now just very green. Very vegetable. Vegetal, I should say. Also, just to let you know, I am fighting COVID, so my sense of smell is probably jacked <laughs> yeah bergamot 22 is a little more i kind of like that it's very green and rose oh still sort of spicy maybe rose could be for me in like a autumn vibe i just wish it wasn't called rose <laughs> which is the main complaint with many uh, the larva senses that like they don't smell like their main ingredient or their first ingredient I mean it's rose 31 which means it has 31 up 30 other notes compared to rose so I like it though <laughs> it's, it's uh yeah it's just self-assured it's a self-assured scent oh santal santal it's almost giving like a home scent i know some people's homes who just smell like this like a carpeted luxury but sort of vintage home has that energy like green carpet but a golden couch with the little divots in there with drapes old drapes and that can block out the sun I like it, but it is a repeated scent, and I don't think I can carry it. I think if I were to wear it, the scent would wear me, not me wearing the scent, which is pretentious enough for me to have been part of the crowd that gets away with the scent, but <laughs> moving on. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't know what to describe it as, but that sort of darker, not edgier, but sort of darker, mysterious no which i just don't think is my vibe and the mantra is dragging down to what i remember it and it's just a sweet earthy scent that i think really does suit me and i think i do carry it really well if i do say so myself <laughs> so yeah um, those are my lalabo scents Actually, I can sample Jasmine 17 as well. Why not? We're here now. So I'll put that next to Tainawa, even though it is suiting more of the brighter side. Um, so I don't know how to really sample these besides just dotting it on the skin like that, rubbing it around. Oh, it's very, it's just very floral to me. <laughs> very sweet and very young it's like almost like the opposite of Tainawa I want to say in the characters that it presents to me it's giving very bright eyed very like up by 6am kind of energy and not off coffee but just because that's how my body clock works kind of vibe yeah again it's not me but it's still a good scent and do you think I would have stopped there with the scent shopping, but I was in the airport looking at DD Free and the lady comes up to me, her name was Zona, or Zona. Um, so if you're at Singapore Airport near Gates B for Terminal 3, 
uh, check it out. Check out the little cosmetic section there, cosmetics and fragrances, and look for Zona. She'll be able to sell you on a scent, but to be fair, there was a promo where you like got two bottles for twenty percent off, and it was already duty free, so no tax. And I was like, uh, I got some currency left over. Let's just give it a go. So it came in, of course, the little Ziploc bags, and these are the two cents that we got at the airport in the 11th hour. <laughs> First one is Rance, Rance by Rancy7095, um, Leroy Empire, um, Eau de Parfum, 50 mils, 1.7 fluid ounces, and she was saying how this line isn't really sold in a lot of countries, and it's like a carries a lineage of old perfume making or something like that. I'm sure it will tell me on the bottle. Intoxicating hints provide lively, captivating charm. Francis Lorenzo celebrated Napoleon's coronation as king of Italy with these precious notes. Oh, okay. So it's from Napoleon's time. And some people say I have a Napoleon complex, so... Must sue me then. <laughs> and then the very last scent I got to be, get that 20% off was the House of Margiela Replicas Jazz Club, which I got because on the flight there, there was this air hostess or steward, I guess, um, who smelled really nice. And I asked him, what perfume is he wearing? And he said, yeah, Jazz Club Replica. And I've always wanted to try Replicas stuff. I always see them in that same retailer that says sells the labber but again i've just been like a bit lazy and when you're spending in your own currency you become a bit more aware of how much you're spending but yeah i was in a different country different currencies so i went ahead and got this so what does this say it says uh, originally jazz club provenance and period is brooklyn 2013 fragrance description Heavy cocktails and cigars, and style description, memory, and a fragrance. Okay. So, I just got the smaller size because sometimes your body's chemicals can really affect how a scent smells, like, long, long run. I didn't have all that time in the store to test out the run, but there's the bottle. So far, I will say this brand feels the most luxe in terms of packaging, but we shall see what the actual perfume performs as. I remember it being slightly citrusy, because um, I was looking for like something for spring and summer. Um, so that's why I found it a bit agreeable. So I'll just spray it yeah, there. Ready? Three, two, one. The best spritzer as well. That was a nice sort of veil of droplets, which is what I like out of my perfume spritzes. And now that I'm smelling it, it smells a lot like, um, I, th I think David Beckham actually had a cologne like this. That's what it's bringing back, a sort of, that sort of purple cologne that David Beckham did back in the day. I should actually spray it somewhere I can smell, because I can't smell my neck. Uh, let me just do the inside of my elbow. Quite daytime, quite... There's an almost sourish sweetness vibe to it, um, that comes from... Yeah. But there is then that underlying spiciness. Hmm. Maybe I regret this. I don't know. <laughs> we shall see. I think it's a good scent to sort of layer with others. But on its own, it's a bit, um, boyish. And now the last scent of the night, thank you for sticking with me to the end, is Replica's Jazz Club. Okay. 
and I got the small size again because I've never used um, House of Marciello's since before or a replica sent at that so I don't know what it's like, I didn't want to commit to anything too crazy um, but I remember really liking the smell so Jazz Club, I was spraying on the inside of my elbow as well as here so let's see a sort of sharp um, spritz up but I don't mind that there's a sort of like a little bit of pushback when you push down but I don't mind that at all okay oh and in case you wanted to see that bottle up close this is what it looks like there yeah this one just gives me a night at a speakeasy kind of energy it's very um I don't want to use the word but like sexy dare I say a little bit sexy and um it's got like a sweetness and a spice and that's that sort of dark and mysterious note from Tenoa in it but it's sort of comforted by these two other things being spicy and sweet slightly that make it a lot more inviting Especially in a night out when I like to go drink cocktails or something like that. Um, when I say spicy, it's sort of like a smoked spice. It's neither too smoky or too spicy, but half of both to create this sort of nice semblance of a scent. And that sweetness helps it along by miles. And if it's anything like on the air host, I know it projects quite well. And I'm happy I'm a little bit dizzy now from all these scents, <laughs> but I, I like it. Now let's see the dry down for Le Emperor, Le Roy Emperor. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit young. I feel like I could use it in the day kind of well if I was going to go on a picnic to the park or something like that. But I don't see it being an office scent. I don't see it being a nighttime scent unless it was layered with something. And I see it only really, really working in the summertime. Walks along the river, picnics in the park, in jazz club I see working, you know, a night out with friends. And you're wanting to have some cocktails, just chat in a bar. Or I wouldn't say it's like a doof doof club kind of scent you'd wear, but it's definitely. Definitely, yeah, going to a bar, going to a jazz club, uh, going on a book date, maybe. Um, I wouldn't say it's going to the night markets, it's more like going, yeah, yeah, something small, social, uh, yeah, classy. Thank you so much for joining me. This was a long return. But I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so glad you made it, and to that one subscriber that left me, please come back. I can't afford to lose any. <laughs> you're all like family to me. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I hope you're all well, and you can check out that bonus video, which I hopefully will film after this. And I'll be back to sort of regular scheduled programming soon. Um, I'll talk to you in a bit. I'll talk to you.